Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. My name is TCaptain X, and today we're going to help you make Call of Duty Vanguard look better and perform better. A very frequent question I've been getting whenever I'm streaming here in my YouTube chat is what kind of PC do you have? What kind of specs do you have? How are you getting that much FPS? And then also, why is your game so vibrant? My game doesn't look like that. Well, today I'm going to show you how to do all those things. We're going to go through all the graphic settings in Vanguards. I'm going to explain each setting, give you options if your goal is maximum performance with the most FPS, or if you're like me and you want really good performance and still have a game that is visually pleasing so that you can also spot and see enemies better. I'm also going to show you a method how to make the color and visibility of the game way better without the use of NVIDIA filters. And this will work also if you have an AMD graphics card. This goes regardless of NVIDIA or AMD. And the best thing about this method is it does not hurt your performance whatsoever, whereas NVIDIA filters do tend to have a pretty big impact on your FPS. One thing I do want to go through are my PC specs. Now, a lot of your the FPS that you're going to get is dependent on your PC. So I have a 3080 graphics card, a Ryzen 9 5900 CPU with 32 gigs of RAM at 3600 megahertz. I also got my PC overclocked by Sense Quality by Kerneal. I will link uh, his info and his website in the description below. If you want the maximum performance out of your PC, I highly recommend looking into this. Even on my computer, which is pretty high end, I saw a drastic import, uh, improvement in my performance after having it overclocked and uh, optimized by Sense Quality. I've also learned a lot of information that I'm going to be using in this video from Kerneal and Sense Quality just by following him on Twitter. Uh, so I recommend maybe checking him out because uh, he's a pretty smart guy. And by the way, I do cover various Call of Duty settings, tips, and loadouts on my channel here, as well as live streams here on YouTube. So if you're looking for any of that, make sure to subscribe with notifications on. That way you know whenever I post a video. So we're first gonna start with graphic settings. So let's go to the display tab first and cover this. For display mode, uh, the best setting is actually going to be full screen for maximum performance. However, I'm on a multiple monitor setup. I like to go in between Discord. Uh, when I'm streaming, I need to be able to get to my YouTube settings, things like that. So full screen borderless is what I do. I really do not notice much of a performance impact by doing this though. If you're in borderless, this is going to lock at uh, auto, but this should be whatever your display resolution is. So I'm on a standard 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080 monitor. This will depend on your own monitor though. This is my main gaming monitor. For the refresh rate, this is going to be whatever uh, your monitor's refresh rate is. Make sure this is to the max of what it can be. I have a 240 hertz monitor. For whatever reason, it like rounds down, but just make sure this isn't way lower than uh, what your monitor is capable of doing. If it is lower, you probably wanna go into your graphic settings or your monitor settings, uh, either in your NVIDIA control panel or your AMD panel, and make sure this is set to the max refresh rate. I highly recommend turning VSync off unless you're experiencing a lot of screen tearing. So screen tearing is basically what it sounds like. It is where the frames kind of don't line up and they will kind of get off sync. VSync though does cause an input delay. Um, it actually says it right here, causes some input lag. So only do this if you're experiencing this tiering. For the frame rate limits, this is important to kind of save your GPU a little bit. For gameplay, I max mine out. I want it to go as high as possible. However, in the menu and when it's out of focus, I have this to much lower. That way your GPU is not working overdrive in the menu where you do not need those maximum frames. For aspect ratio, you should be fine to just leave this to automatic. If you're on like a really wide screen or kind of different size monitor, you might need to consider changing this though so it fits to your screen. Now you can adjust the brightness setting in Call of Duty itself. I've left mine at 50 though, and we're gonna end up adjusting it elsewhere though, which we'll talk about towards the end of the video. If you're playing on a computer monitor for display gamma, you should be on 2.2. If you're playing on a TV, you're gonna be on 2.4. Focus mode should be off unless you're playing on a like ultra widescreen monitor. This is for um, if you're not going to fill the entire screen of your monitor, this can set like an overlay outside of the game. Um, again, I'm playing on a normal 16 by 9 monitor, so this is not something I've experienced with. 
only for people with wide monitors. Your display adapter should be whatever your graphics card is. And then for on-demand texture streaming, I do actually recommend opening this up and turning this off. This will make your game look better. However, Vanguard's been subject to a lot of packet loss. Turning this off will reduce your packet loss somewhat. It will not fix it, but it does help by turning it off and should help your performance for a smoother game. All right, moving on to the quality tab. This is where there's going to be a lot of things that change depending on your PC and depending on your goals. Now, one thing I will mention is if you're playing the campaign and you just want maximally like visually stunning graphics, just go to high or ultra, whatever your PC can handle. But most of you, you're probably looking for a performance boost here. So we're gonna set it to custom and we're gonna start changing a lot of these. Now, render resolution. This is very subjective. For the majority of people, I'm probably gonna recommend just keeping this at 100. But if you're on a high-end PC like myself, you could consider turning this up some. I turned this to 110. I've tried as high as 120. Um, I think the game looks a lot better by doing this. I feel like I can pick out enemies better from this, but this does have a decent effect on your FPS. Now, I did recommend this to a few friends that were on more mid-level PCs, and they went to 110, and they as well thought their game looked a lot better and that they could pick out enemies a lot better by doing this. So I recommend playing around with this setting. I wouldn't go much above 120. Um, if you're on a low end PC, definitely keep this at 100. If you're on a really low end PC and you're struggling to get by, you could also consider turning this down slightly, maybe 80 or 90. For dynamic resolution, I would only recommend using this if you're on a very low end PC. The way dynamic resolution works is if you turn it on, you can set a target frame rate. So let's say you're on a low end PC and you just want to get 60 FPS. Your game would basically adjust its graphics on the fly to reach that. I've tried this and tried setting it much higher, like setting it to keep above 200 and it just gets weird. I really don't recommend doing this. Moving on to details and textures. Now this is the part where this is going to depend a lot on do you want maximum fps and max performance or do you want the game to look a little better and also help your uh, visual quality so that you can pick out enemies a little bit better now for the majority of people texture resolution should probably be set on very low however i've noticed that on on even on high for my pc that it's actually not causing that much of a decrease in fps so I'm in here, I'm on Oasis, and I'm not moving, but I'm getting high 200 FPS frames. As I walk around and I just hit a, uh, a grenade, I'm still staying consistently above 200 on this FPS. Now, even if I go close up to a wall, getting over 300 FPS currently. Vanguard's a lot more optimized compared to like Call of Duty Warzone or previous Call of Duties. Now, I do want to show you guys the differences of what high versus low looks like. So at high, you can see all the textures on this wall here, um, the fire, the wood here, the, the graining of the, of the chairs, all that. If we go to very low, you can see this wall is smoothed out and a lot of these items are, everything is kind of smoothed out. Now I am getting more FPS. Um, I'm getting a, probably about 20 to 30 more FPS by doing this. Um, but like I said, on my PC, I'm constantly getting above 200 FPS, even on high, so I might as well do this. But again, like I said, if you're on a low end PC, this is a big setting that you're probably gonna wanna turn down. Now, the reason I keep mine on high though, is I feel like I can pick out enemies much better when it's on high, because I feel like they stand out from the environment. This is very subjective, and this is definitely a setting to play around with. Now, as we go through the details and textures tab here, one thing to point out is in short, putting everything to low is best for max performance, but there are some ones that you can get away with leaving on high and it's not gonna hurt your FPS nearly as much and make your game look a lot better. For the texture filter and Tropic, I have this one on high. This is another one that is subjective. However, this one doesn't seem to have hardly any effect on your VRAM. I'm gonna move my webcam here so you can see this. So if we go to the texture resolution, this has a massive effect on my VRAM. I have plenty of VRAM though, thanks to my graphics card, but this has no effect. So the general rule of thumb is if it has no effect, 
it's not going to hurt your FPS or affect your FPS as much. What this setting does is it makes things at an angle basically look better. Again, I think when this is on, you can pick out enemies a little bit better when they're against like an angled wall. The particle quality level has to do with explosions and things like that. This has a low effect on your VRAM. I've left this on medium. I really haven't noticed too much of a difference with this setting. So you can really do whichever you want with this one. Particle resolution though is a different one. For whatever reason, if you put this on low, this can make certain objects in the distic appear almost like staticky. So this is one I do recommend leaving on high though. And even though it is a medium effect on VRAM, I really have not noticed uh, very much at all of an effect on FPS with this. Bullets, impacts, and sprays is totally personal preference. This has really no effect on your FPS. I like to be able to see where the bullets hit on the wall. Um, however, if, so if you remember from like Warzone where people would spray the uh, bodies, like the, the spray paint images of bodies on walls to trick people, if you turn this off, that will get rid of that. So it's up to you. Shader quality, I do have set to low. Typically anything that involves lighting and shadows has a bigger effect on your performance. So I do recommend keeping this to low. Tessellation, I do have off. Personally, I don't actually notice much of a difference for this, whether it is off or on, but for best performance, it's usually good to just keep off. For these three, for the level of detail, these ones you want on the max or highest setting. This is really gonna help you pick out enemies at a distance. So level of detail, distance range, keep that at long. Nearby level of detail though, really I did not notice any difference on uh, performance, so I just kept that on high. Again, if you need max performance, just turn that to low. Distant level of detail, again, keep this on high, it will help you pick out enemies at a distance. Clutter draw distance has to do with things like foliage, so like bushes or you know a lot of grass. I think this on low actually helps you pick out enemies better though, um, because you can kind of see the characters a little bit better through them. This will make characters uh, hair look really crappy though. So if that bothers you, turn this on high. Volumetric quality level, again, anything that has to do with lighting or shadows tends to have a pretty big effect on performance. So I would recommend keeping this to low. This has to do with like lighting, fog and clouds. All right, shadow and lighting. The short and simple answer to this whole section is pretty much everything should be off or low with the exception of caches shadows tends to have a very big uh, effect and impact on your performance and your fps so in general everything should be off or very low except you do want to leave the caches turned on but the spot cache size to low again all of this is going to be kept low ambient occlusion is going to be low this has to do uh, again with shadows same with screen space reflection. This has to do with reflective surfaces. Moving on to post processing effects. This is going to depend a lot on your PC and your goals. And this is where we can really make the game look a lot better or perform a lot better. So if you have an NVIDIA card, NVIDIA DLSS, uh, this can basically, it makes your game like render images at a higher render, render resolution than it typically would. I really only recommend this if you're playing on a 1440p monitor or higher. For 1080p, I notice very little effect, and if anything, I feel like it makes the game look blurry and look worse. Now, these two settings, the Fidelity FX Super Resolution and Fidelity CAS, you can only have one or the other on. You can't do both. In short, if you're on a low-end PC and you're getting really bad performance, I would recommend turning the uh, Super Resolution on probably to balanced. Essentially, what this does is it is going to sacrifice your image quality, but it will have a very large increase on your performance and your fps now it's supposed to be a very negligible difference on quality so the quality setting would have the least impact on quality with still improving your fps however balance is what i'm hearing is working best for people with lower end pcs performance would be the maximum fps increase but it would make your game look really bad i do want to compare this though because if you're getting decent frames and you want your game to look way better and be able to spot enemies way easier, I highly recommend turning this off and turning on Fidelity FX CAS. 
This setting makes your game look light years better and sharper. So on the left, I have the uh, Fidelity CIS on, and then on the right, I have CIS off, but the super resolution on, on balance. On the right, you're gonna see I am getting higher FPS, but the game looks a lot more blurry. Now, I'm not sure how well this is going to turn out for you guys watching either on your phone or you know once it's rendered and uploaded into YouTube, but I promise you this is a night and day difference. The game with CIS on looks far better, and I think even if you're taking a dip in performance, I think it is worth it because it's gonna be a lot easier to spot enemies. Now, one thing to point out is you can change the strength of this. I've left this at 0.9, um, I haven't played around with this too much. This is the default setting. I don't believe this has any performance impact, but it might be something to play around with if you feel like it's hurting your frames a lot by turning this on. Moving on to anti-aliasing. Now, previously you could turn anti-aliasing off. In this title, you cannot turn it off. Um, you can only have it to SMA two times or filmic two times. You can turn the level to low though. Overall, I'm going to keep it on the lowest setting with on low um, just because this can be a little bit of a performance impact. And what anti-aliasing does is it smooths out jagged edges. I actually think the jagged edges can be good because I think it helps like discern and stand and stand out your enemies from the environment. Again, this will be a setting that is very personal preference though. For depth of field, I recommend turning this off. What this does is when you zoom your gun in, it's going to make the background kind of around the gun kind of look blurry. I think this is bad because if you have like an enemy coming in your line of sight uh, outside of what you're looking at, it's maybe a little bit harder to pick them up. And then for VRAM usage target, I recommend maxing this out to 90%. Unless perhaps you're on an older PC, you might want to turn this down a little bit to be a little bit easier in your graphics card. Moving on to gameplay, there they do have the field of view setting in here. Now, the bigger your field of view is, the more of an impact this is gonna have on your performance. So again, if you're on a lower end PC, you might wanna consider not playing at the max field of view. If you do want the full benefits of field of view, I recommend switching to affected ADS. I do have a video, it's an older video on Warzone that talks about uh, field of view, but everything still applies to it. I'll link it in the description below. In case you're a console player and or you're new to PC and you're not really sure on what field of view is best for you. For camera movement, I, I recommend uh, turning this down to the lowest setting. This involves like screen shake and things like that during explosions. So if you want like a very immersive effect, then put it all the way to 100. But for performance issues and be able to see and shoot your enemies better, I'd recommend turning it down. World motion blur and weapon motion blur. Definitely recommend keeping both of these off. World motion blur is horrible for finding people when you're turning. Um, now, apparently this helps some people with motion sickness, but or if you maybe if you want a very immersive experience for performance, definitely keep both of these off. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll have the ability to uh, use NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. This is supposed to reduce system latency and increase responsiveness. I recommend turning it all the way on if you have it. If you don't have a NVIDIA card, sorry. This should not really hurt your performance in any way though. Now, putting it on boost does increase the power draw from your GPU. So maybe if you're running some crazy overclock on it, you might wanna turn it on. You might wanna not turn it on boost. I do have a pretty standard overclock on my GPU. I run on boost, everything runs perfectly fine. My temps, the hottest I've ever seen, my temp skater like 70 Celsius. All right, that's it for all the graphics settings part. Now let's talk about how to make your game look way better without using filters. Um, so it's gonna help with visibility. The game's gonna look not as stale. And again, this is gonna work for both NVIDIA or AMD users. So to do this, we're gonna go into the NVIDIA control panel. For AMD users, you would go into your version of that. I think it's like Radeon something something. You right click on your display and then you're gonna click on that and open it up. If you don't have this, make sure you have your drivers completely installed for your graphics card. So we're gonna go here to adjust desktop color settings. For AMD, again, you're gonna have something similar to this. It's just gonna look a little bit different. And this is kind of where the magic happens. You can essentially do what filters do all from right here, but without having the performance impact. This is very dependent on your monitor and your personal preference. These are my recommended settings. I've turned my brightness up slightly to 55. 
I've turned contrast up a pretty decent bit to 65 and I've turned the gamma down just slightly to 1.4. For digital vibrance, this is what really makes the color pop. Now I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm gonna drag this down. So if we go all the way down, it's like black and white. If we crank it up, it looks super saturated. 80% has been really good for me. Um, I'm playing on a TN panel. It's an ASUS 240 Hertz monitor. The colors are not super vibrant on this panel. So I have mine pretty high at 80%. But if you have a really good monitor, especially you're on like an IPS panel or something like that, you might not need to go quite this high. Now for hue, I'd recommend either staying at zero or going slightly up. I think for on Warzone, I was playing at seven because Warzone has even worse colors than this. Vanguard seems to be a little bit better. What turning it up, it's gonna brighten your game slightly and make it a little bit more yellow tinge. So if I go, you're gonna see as I go up, it gets kind of yellowy green, then it goes into the different colors as I go farther. So again, I'd say zero or slightly, maybe I'll go like four and play around, play around with that for a little bit. Now the other thing you can do outside of the video control panel is on your monitor itself. So on like the back buttons or little side buttons of your monitor, you can go into the brightness and contrast settings there. On my monitor, like I said, my colors are a little flat on this monitor. So I have both the brightness, contrast, and saturation all turned up a little bit. Now for my NVIDIA users, I will cover my uh, control panel settings. Um, these can play a pretty big impact on your performance as well. For, your AM, for my AMD guys, I'm sorry. The good thing though is AMD is actually getting a lot better FPS on the newer graphics cards, at least compared to NVIDIA, if you're playing on 1080p. So I'm just gonna quickly scroll through these. Um, this is something that I am not an expert on to be completely honest. I've researched this and gotten recommendations through other people. The main person being Kernel from Sense Quality. Again, just pause if you need to see any of these, but this is what I am currently using for my NVIDIA control panel. So yeah, guys, that is it. I hope this helped. Again, a lot of this is very subjective depending on your own PC. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to try my best and help. And again, if you're looking for other settings videos, I have several on my page already and I'll be doing more in the future. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on those and we'll see you guys in the next one.